welcome back to Love Your Weekend. Still to come by my reckoning, it's nearly Tipple's time. Long considered somewhat inferior to their unadulterated cousins, but not anymore. Drinks expert Tom Surge is here with the very best in wine spritzers. But first, my next guest has worked with some of the greats, Bob Hoskins, Morecambe and Wise, Dame Judi Dench, and of course one huge part of her 60 plus years in showbiz was playing the ever so patient Betty to Michael Crawford's Frank Spencer in Some Mothers Do Have Them. And when it came to calamities, Frank really did have them. You promise you won't be angry with me? <laughs> I suppose we're stuck again, aren't we? We've got a bit of trouble, yes. <laughs> You won't panic, will you? Of course not. What is it? You'll keep calm. Is the back wheels again? Mm. <laughs> They're over the edge. Oh my goodness me. I mean, that's a bit, it looks a bit dangerous, that. It was very hairy. <laughs> it was very hairy, and considering, you know, that there was no safety things at all. In those days. They, they, they actually, all I had, Alan, was a little thread around my ankle, and somebody, hopefully, holding on to it at the other end. There was nothing. I mean, you couldn't get away with it now, that's for sure. But, you know, we were on the top of that car, literally yeah. hanging over the edge. And I used to suffer, well, still do, actually, from what my little sister at the time used to call verdigree. And <laughs> I had a lot of verdigree up there. Lots of verdigree doing that. Oh, no, several hundred feet up and balancing on top of that yeah. car. But the things you do when you're young. When you're young and you don't know any better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, great chemistry with Michael. Have you kept up over the years? Oh, I sure have. Bless him, he, um, when I lost my beloved Edward um, husband, um, Michael got back in touch and he phones me like twice, you know, every fortnight. Yeah. He will phone me from New Zealand or LA or wherever he is. And um, he's here at the moment and I'm going to be seeing him. He's going to come and stay with his beloved wife, Tash, uh, come up and stay with me in the country. He's been a true friend, yeah. a true friend, and it's been a long, long friendship. But know? also his career developed astonishingly. I mean, you have Phantom of the Opera, and he's, you know, quite a, quite a, quite a megastar. Who would have thought, thought from <laughs> Frank Spencer <laughs> yeah. to the Phantom? I mean, there's one of the sadnesses of my life, actually, that I didn't see Michael do the Phantom. I did see Phantom, but yeah. Michael had left when Edward and I went to see it on Broadway. Mm. He is extraordinary, yeah. extraordinary in his daring, you know. Because he did all his own stunts, didn't he? I mean, that was totally. I roller skating under an articulated lorry, I remember that one. <laughs> They're en engraved in our minds because we're all sitting at home going... <gasps> That's the amazing thing about Michael is that he pushes the boundaries and he's very particular about what he does. You know, there can be great sort of longers in between things that he does because it has to be the right thing. Perfection. And he throws everything into it when he accepts something. He did, however, lumber you with people saying to you for the rest of your life, ooh, Betty. That's for sure. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, the extraordinary thing was he actually never said that. He never actually said, ooh, Betty, at all. But, you know, that's been the sort of... Everybody <laughs> else has ever seen. That's for sure. That's for sure. But I'm delighted because it comes out later on in the year. They're repeating it in the autumn. And I'm just excited to see my little grandsons who've never seen it. In fact, they've no clue I'm an actress. You know, I'm <laughs> Nana. And no idea what I do. And they're about to find out. And I'll, I'll really plummet. And, and <laughs> So that'd be lovely to see in yeah. their eyes, you yeah. know. Well, it's still funny, I can tell you, because when we run clips before the show in the gallery, I hear in my ear everybody laughing, and they were all laughing this morning. Still? Looking, they're still laughing. Oh, they're still there. That's lovely, Alan. You come from an acting dynasty, though. I remember seeing your father, Roy Detrice, in Brief Lives. Did you see that? I did, at Richmond Theatre. He was playing John Aubrey, a one-man show. Yeah. The most amazing tour de force. When he did it originally, he was in his 40s, and it started at the Hampstead Theatre, and then went into the West End, 
and then went to Broadway and then went all over the world. And he's in the Guinness Book of Records for the longest running one man show. And then the years roll by, roll by, and well into his 80s, he was like 85, they asked him would he return and he did it at the Richmond Theatre. And the great thing was, he said, you know, when I used to do it back in my 40s, it took him three hours to do the makeup, you know, the, all the prosthetics, <laughs> the nose, yes. the, no, all the, everything, three hours to do it. But when he did it in his 80s, he just went like that with his hair, and he was there, <laughs> he, was he was ready. But you've become this acting dynasty, really, um, your father, yourself, your sister Karen, who was the little girl in Mary Poppins. Karen little Jane Patrice. Banks, yes. Little Jane Banks, yes. yes. And is Karen still acting? No, she's not. Uh, she's actually over here. I'm about to go and see her now, actually. She's just flown in, flown in from L.A. and she's going to come and stay with me. Because, um, you know, we see each other so rarely. I spent Thanksgiving with her last year in America. But she spent many years doing Disney mm. films. And then she kind of backed out. She did a few other movies. But now, you know, she has grown children and her husband is a producer, film producer. But she's very much into conservation and is setting up a, a TV channel in America to do conservation. And she's an extraordinary girl, actually. She, you know, you can be in the car with her and something, <laughs> she puts on the brakes and she sees, you know, a hummingbird on the side of the road. I said, what are you doing? She jumps out, gets the hummingbird and, you know, she then takes it home and cares for it, <laughs> then returns it to the place and releases it. Well Everything. trained by Mary Poppins. That's <laughs> all I can say, like a robin on exactly. her hand. Yes, it all goes exactly. back to the... exactly. Your career has been very diverse. I'm going to show you a piece now from a Hammer horror movie. Who would have thought that Michelle Dutrice would have been in a, in a Hammer horror movie called The Witches? Hello, <laughs> Hello. Mm. Does Big Cat belong here? Oh, no he don't. But he hung about all day. Maybe he's looking for a new home. Pretty boy. You like it here too, do you? Mm. How far is the uh, rectory? The rectory, miss? Mm. I thought I'd pay my respects to Mr. Bax. Oh, you mean the Bax's house. Is it far from here? Oh, it's just up the lane and around. I'll show you after tea, miss. Joan Fontaine. I have never seen that movie, Alan. I mean, I've well, never seen it. That was, I, that was you. That was. Yeah. How old was I there, for goodness sake? Not very. 14 or something. <laughs> what the heck? With Joan Fontaine, yeah. yes. Who, um... It's a strange lady, actually. But oh, go on. We like <laughs> gossip on this programme. <laughs> no, she was very nice to me. She yes. was charming to me, but... Uh, she 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 was a big Hollywood star, you know, and and let them know it. And um, um, no, I've never seen that movie, The Witches. The Witches. The Witches. The Witches. Yeah, the witches right. Say, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was watching the. But lovely. the voice. I mean, the, vo the little tiny voice yeah. up there. Oh. I mean, what is that? I sometimes catch my early performances. I mean, they're not. Enormously basso profundo. And that, I remember my first radio broadcast with a man called Derek Cooper Derek on Radio Cooper. Four. Loved yes, it. Did great yes. about the voice. And I heard myself talking to him. <laughs> Never do it again. You re don't listen or watch yourself. That, that's the answer. I but know. it's been a consistent career. I remember you as a little Nell in the old curiosity shop way back in the 60s, which was one of your first jobs. Yes. But I would we have also been saw 12. you in 12. Yeah. Gosh. I would have been 12 yeah. then. And I remember being horrified because, you know, there, there she is, she's dying of consumption. And I remember there was a big thing going on um, that I looked far too fat. <laughs> you weren't little Nell at all. I wasn't little Nell at all. And it's continued, quite frankly. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? But, um, no, that, you know, those were the days, Alan, when... The BBC did all the wonderful classics mm. on a Sunday mm. and Children's Hour. Yes, I remember them well. The you Silver know, the, Sword. Yes, yes. And I, and I did another one, Les Miserables, yeah. playing Fantine and, and Cosette with Frank Finlay. And, and once again, that was Children's Hour on well, a Sunday. it's funny you should say that. What? Have a look at this. I should like to see the outside world. To the dockyards. They're firing at 
him. I love him. And that was before they put music to Les Mis. <laughs> How did they make it feel like you were in revolutionary France? I mean, do you, you remember? Believe it in the, mm. in the studio on BBC yeah. at, at, at Lime Grove, I think it was a tiny studio. Yeah. I've never seen that either. Do you look back on those days fondly, though? I mean, what you know, the absolutely, variety of things. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know, because I'm so associated with Betty. Yes. You know, but there was a heck of a lot more, you know, mm. before that. And then I think that was probably one of the reasons why Michael and I worked as Frank and Betty, because we were both actors. Ser yeah. We weren't comics, we were serious actors. So when she's telling him that she's pregnant and having a baby, we were doing it, you know, for real as actors. We weren't trying to get laughs. But you know how I mean? did you keep a straight face well, I didn't. some of his reactions? <laughs> I, I mean, when he went into his kind of mode, you know? <laughs> it was impossible and I mean we were always having to be separated always you know I would be sent out of the rehearsal room because I could not stop laughing and uh, <laughs> I remember he, he gave me a terrible legacy actually Michael mm, a very weak bladder oh really that was that was Michael <laughs> and I remember when we were doing the Christmas special and he came down from the ceiling as the angel of the Lord, oh, yes, with the big wings, wings and the berry yeah. and, and the surplus, and, and I, as the Virgin Mary, am sitting with baby <laughs> Jessica in the crib, and all the shepherds are around, and wise men, and everything. And we never rehearsed it. We did it for real in, in, in the recording. And he came down, and his white surplus shot up in the air like this. And he's holding it down, saying, don't look up there, you <laughs> dirty shepherds. <laughs> And he's going round and round. Well, of course, I wet myself. And it was just impossible because, you know, the, the, the designer came to me afterwards. He said, oh, what am I to tell the dry cleaners? And I'd say, the Virgin Mary wet herself. And, you know, and it was awful. And, you know, it's been like that ever since. So thank you so much, Michael Crawford. <laughs> oh dear. Let's 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 have a little uh, I say a more serious clip. Is it well it is more serious, but it was to bring us more up to date really, with a very English scandal working with Ben Wisher on the story of Jeremy Thorpe. Mm. Uh, a modern drama mm. and brilliantly mm. encapsulated with Hugh Grant playing Jeremy Wonderful Thorpe. Wonderful story and, yeah. and and beautifully directed by Stephen Frears. Mm. And it was lovely to do that, playing Edna Friendship who befriended, wonderful name, befriended uh, Norman Scott, you know, played by Ben Wishon. And, uh, and she was just a, a sort of very solid lady, you know, ran a pub in, in, in Devon and, and um, kind of took him under her wing and went to the old Bailey, you know, to support him and was a, was a good friend. I remember we had the read-through, you know, where all the cast come together and all the creatives and everything, the makeup, the wardrobe, the producers, the directors, all the American backers, everything, come to this read-through where we read through the whole three episodes. So all the actors are around this big, big table, because there's a lot of us, and there's fruit and, and, and water and everything and place names and all beautifully organised. And I, I saw my name, Cheryl Dutrice, in a pile of scripts there. And I thought, who's next? Hugh Grant sitting next to me. So I thought, oh, that, that, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he comes in and I'm, I stand up and uh, he said, oh, Michelle, how lovely to see you. Gives me a big hug. And I look up into those piercing blue eyes. And I said, I think I've just wet myself. <laughs> I mean, how can you say that? Tissue, I shouldn't be let out on them, really, I shouldn't. No, I'm a liability, I really am. I um, don't think we've ever had quite so much talk on the show about, about your wetting. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I think we should have a look at the clip and dry ourselves up a bit. There's a man outside. Tommy, would you take it for a moment, please? Sorry. This man, he's got a yellow Honda. Would you write down the number, please? What for? I can't stop. Oh, I 
I've got it. Who is he? He says someone wants to kill me. Why have you changed your shirt? He's very good looking. Oh, Even in, in that short clip, we get a sense of the tension and suspense there with Ben Whishaw. I mean, as Norman Scott, yes. it, there must be a delight for you having, you know, worked with so many greats over the years in seeing strong new talent like Ben Whishaw coming oh, through. Absolutely. No, he he is such a clever, clever actor. Was it Paddington know. Bear? Yes, yeah. he's Paddington Bear. And, and, and a wonderful theatre actor, and this is going to hurt all of the wonderful backlog of stuff that he's done. And a nice, nice bloke, you know. And, and also working with, with, well, I didn't, unfortunately, with Hugh Grant. Great Different sadness team. there, but... Um, there you are, but he'll never forget you. <laughs> I can tell you, neither will I. It has been an absolute delight, Michelle. Thank, Thank you, you very Alan. much indeed. And you all, Thank you. you're okay. Yes, I'm not. In your company, Thank you. I cry. Oh. You always make me cry in wonderful programmes that well, you I do. Well, I suppose that's slightly better than it the is. Than the other. <laughs> Thank but you. Can we tend you to a summer spritzer afterwards? Ooh. Okay, you can, go, you can go first. No, now it's time. <laughs> Moving on. This show's really going to the dogs, isn't it? I said I'd lower the show. <laughs> time to soak up the best. <laughs> you see, every link. Time to soak up the no, very no. best of British countryside in today's Ode to Joy. Mm. 